Testing, testing. One, two, three, three, two, four. All praises to Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the name of the Savior, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We know you don't know the truth, so we're here to give you the truth by the word of the Lord. We know the world does not understand the true gospel. That is why we're here to give it to you from the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. No reinterpretation. The reinterpretation has happened within the so-called Christendom, the Christianity religion. It came out of Catholicism. You see, that's where the reinterpretation came from. You got Louis Farrakhan out of Chicago in the Nation of Islam that has nothing to do with the actual religion of Islam. They just decided to form that religion over here. And you need to figure out who that man is because that man may not be a Negro. You need to figure, out, figure that out. That man may not even be a Negro. And that's not a good thing for you people, for you black people. You see, we like, uh, our people are drawn to what is shimmering and shining. All the glitters ain't gold, as they say, right? You see, our people love these people with name recognition. Our people love people who have money. You see, the Bible warns against listening to those who are so-called rich. There's a multitude of scriptures that warn you against listening to the rich. None of these rich people, not one, are out here telling you the truth of the Bible. None of these rich people, not one, are telling you to follow, follow the laws of God. You see, all of your people, all your celebrities, whether they be your, in religion, whether they be in music, movies, sports, none of them are out here telling you and professing the word of the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. None of them are doing that. You see, they're not made for that because they don't want to lose their money. They don't want to lose that. You see, they worship the God of Mammon. That's what they want. They can't stand to lose their money. They don't want to come back to the ghetto. They don't want to come back to the ghetto, you see. So your people are meant to suffer. You see, Moses suffered with the Hebrews instead of enjoying the pleasures of Egypt. You see that? And that is what the Lord has done to some of his Israelites. He has called some of us to come out and to preach the gospel to you to tell you the truth. And we know that that truth hurts. We know that it hurts real, real bad. People can't, it's hard to accept the truth. It's very difficult to accept the truth. As we say in the military, change causes friction. You see, what happens is, we tell you the truth of this Bible, and in your mind, you have something else. And what happens is, there's a friction, there's a rub. And that rub is, look, I've been told these things, we've been living by these things for hundreds and hundreds of years. And now, there's a small group of people, a small group of men, that are out here telling me that I have learned something that is not true. Which one is the truth? Have I learned a lie? Or are these people that are, that are coming out here professing the true word of the Lord, are they lying? Well, the Lord said this. He said, <laughs> Woo, Lord, I tell you. He said that there's going to be a group of Gentiles that come unto him, unto the Lord, saying, We have been told lies wherein there is no profit. So now that, that presents a question to you. Is what you learned in the Christian church correct? Is what you learned in the Catholic church correct? Is what you're learning in the Muslim, uh, Islamic mosque, is it correct? Or any other world religion? Because the Lord, the, this Bible right here, this Bible right here that is universal, the best-selling book in the world, on the planet, this book says that all the gods of the Gentiles are no gods. Do not fear them. That's what this book says. You see, there's only one God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is the only God. All the other gods are false. The Lord allows it because he wants to deceive the Gentiles. They're supposed to worship the host of heaven. 
They're supposed to love and worship dogs and animals, the, the, the creation instead of the creator. You see, there's only one nation of people on the planet <laughs> that worship that dog. They love the dogs. And they, they will doggo leave an inheritance to a dog. Can you believe that? They will leave an inheritance. They will leave something behind after they die to a dog. Not to a human being. All the relatives they may have and all the other people on the earth, no, they won't leave it to them. They will leave it to an animal. That is ridiculous. That shows how, in, how delusional some of these people are. But guess what? A lot of our people, the so-called blacks, Latinos, Hispanics, Native Americans, are also delusional. And we're here to attempt to reach the elect of the 12 tribes of Yisrael. That's what we're here to do, okay? And I'd like to open up with some reading. But before I do that, I'm going to do this proper-like. All praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. All right, that is the Heavenly Father and only begotten Son's name, our Savior and King. I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 61. The good news of deliverance, and this is to the Israelites. All right, this is to the Israelites. This is not to the world, this is to the Israelites. And you're going to find this right here. It's very explicit. Isaiah chapter 61. Do you know Yahweh Shai Mashiach? got the scroll out and read it in a synagogue on the Sabbath. And we're doing this today. The sovereign Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, has filled me with his holy slakia. Read that again. <laughs> the sovereign Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, has filled me with his spirit. That spirit being the Holy Spirit. He has chosen me and sent me to bring good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to announce release to captives, and freedom to those in prison. He has sent me to proclaim that the time has come when the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, will save his people and defeat their enemies. So you don't think you have enemies, but we have enemies. The enemies of the Lord are the Israelites' enemies. The enemies of the Israelites are the enemy of the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, the Lord God. He has sent me to comfort all who mourn. Who is this to? It's, going to? it's coming up right here. To give to those who mourn in Zion. Did it say in the world? No, it did not. It said in Zion. Zion is another, is a synonym, another word for Yisrael, Yasha'ala. Joy and gladness instead of grief, a song of praise instead of sorrow. They, those, those, those in Zion, the Israelites, they will be like trees that the Lord Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shah himself, has planted. They will all do what is right. We're not doing that now, but we will once we are changed from this immortal flesh to mortal flesh, this corruptible flesh into incorruptible flesh. And the Lord will be praised for what he has done. They will rebuild cities that have long been in ruins. Are we going to do it? Oh, no. We're going to be the administrators. We're going to be the supervisors. Because what does it say? My people foreigners, those Gentiles will serve you. They will take care of your flocks and farm your land and tend to your vineyards. And you will be known as the priests of the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, the servants of our God, of our power. That's what it says. You will enjoy the wealth of the nations. You will enjoy the wealth of the Gentiles and be proud that it is yours. That is the promise to the repentant Israelites. Not everybody on the planet, not just because you believe in God, not because you believe in Jesus, no. See, Jesus isn't even his name. You don't even know your own, what you proclaim to be the Savior's name. We told you at the beginning of this lesson. It is Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach in Hebrew, the anointed. Christ, Christ is not the Messiah's last name. Christ is a title, it means anointed. Okay? We'll do it again. In 1524, a European came up with the letter J, created from the letter I, by putting a hook on the end of it, making it the letter J. That is the, that is the, um, uh, what is that? Sign language for the letter J. All right? ASL. Okay, so, we're going to get into this lesson. This lesson is on because we are in, did you know that the doomsday clock, 
The doomsday clock is 90 seconds away from midnight. What does that stand for? We're going to read what it stands for right here. It says, what is the doomsday clock? The doomsday clock is a symbolic timepiece showing how close we are to, quote, destroying our world with dangerous technologies of our own making, end quote, according to the bulletin. Now, this is from Al Jazeera News, okay? It says, a Chicago-based nonprofit organization that controls the clock. I didn't even know it was in, in, in Chicago. Interesting. Interesting. The bulletin describes it as, quote, many things all at once. It's a metaphor. It's a logo. It's a brand. And it's one of the most recognizable symbols in the past hundred years. Now, listen to this. This is the whole purpose of the doomsday clock, because I'm going to tell you what the doomsday actually is in just a minute. Okay, it says the last part of it says the closer it moves to midnight, the closer humanity is to the end of the world. That's what the doomsday clock is for, to give you a 90 second warning, meaning we are as close as we has ever been to the end of the world. Now, what is doomsday and what is the end of the world? I'm going to tell you today as revealed in the scriptures. The end of the world or the doomsday clock represents the end of days, which is also the end of Gentile rule upon the earth. You see the Gentiles rule on the earth right now, just in case you didn't know. You see, yes, we have a, a portion of them, Europeans claiming to be the chosen people of God that are not doing one law of the Lord. They allow all kinds of filthiness in the land in and around them. Now, for the repentant Israelites, we have no control over the laws in any of the countries that we happen to be in captivity. However, what we are to do is what, like we're doing today. These are the words of the Lord Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, is we're supposed to point out the truth. We're supposed to point out the error of the Gentile ways as well as, firstly, the ways of the Israelites. We're supposed to point those out. Okay? That's the first thing we're supposed to do. Secondary, you Gentiles... Now, when it says the light, light has been um, the light, of, light unto the Gentiles. Well, guess what? There's a portion of rem, of the remnant obedient Israelites that are going to give the truth to the unrepentant Israelites. So that is the light unto the Gentiles. It's not talking about you Gentile, you Gentiles that are not Israelites. Now, if you want to cleave unto Israel, like in Isaiah chapter 14, you are free to do so. But the culmination of that will not happen on this side. That will happen when what, who you call Jesus Christ comes. He's not coming for you. There's no Jesus, by the way. Jesus is not coming. Yahweh Shai is coming. That who is coming. There is no Jesus, okay? You, you probably missed the point where the J was created in the year 1524. So prior to that, there was no Jewish people. There was no Jesus. None of that existed prior to 1524, all right? He had a Hebrew name, not an English name, okay? And you can transliterate all you want. You'll never get the force that is in the language of the Hebrews. You'll never get it. And the book of Ecclesiasticus talks about that very fact. Now, the doomsday clock is, is a signal of the beginning of the end of Gentile rule. That's what it's signifying. And they're saying that it is 90 seconds to the end of, of their own rule upon the earth. And I got a picture of it. I'm going to post in this video, post-production, where you see these, these Gentiles in front of the doomsday clock. These scientists unmask it. And they d disclosed that, hey, it's 90 seconds to the, what they propose to the end of their rule on the earth. Now, they don't see it as that. They think that the entire world is going to be destroyed by the weapons that were created by the Europeans. That's what they believe. But it's not going to be destroyed by those weapons. Now, what's going to happen is the Lord is going to destroy a lot of the people on the earth with those weapons. Yes, but the earth will not be destroyed by, by man. It will not. The Lord's not going to allow that to happen. What's going to happen is he's going to allow that man destroys himself. You see, you got to understand this. World War I was fought by the Europeans. World War II was fought by the Europeans. World War III is going to be fought by the Europeans. And guess what happened during each one of those wars? Death, destruction, and disaster of European nations. And what did they do after that? After World War I, what did they do? They formed what they called the League of Nations. Then it morphed into the United Nations. And then they invited other Gentile nations into their group. All right, and this is what is going on right now. This is the reason why you have the bombing that's going around right now all in Yemen. Okay? Now, you also have, we talked about last week, wars and rumors of wars from Matthew chapter 24. And we see that it's getting, 
is increasing more. The violence is increasing more and more and more because guess what? World War Three has to start some kind of way. It does doesn't start off with all all the um, all of the uh, brutal force. That's not what happens. There's a run up to a war. First of all, in this country, they try to get the American people to get psychologically behind war, like it means something. They're going to do whatever they want to do anyway. They're going to do whatever they want to do anyway, whether the American people agree with it or not. They're, that case in point, a lot of Americans and other people around the world are against the state, the fake Jews of Israel, bombing the Gazans and the Palestinians. The majority of the planet is against that but they're doing it anyway. Why? Because he is in a position of power to do so. That is why it's happening. He has been gifted the power to sword for a period of time. Now, unfortunately for us Israelites, because we were rebellious against our God, our power, Yahweh, he had to send his only begotten son to remind us, Yahweh Shai, who in the world Israel called Jesus Christ. All right? But now we're in a position where we can, we have the knowledge of repentance and that salvation is unto us. All right, salvation is unto the Israelites. That's all in Luke chapter one. The gospel is spelled out in Luke chapter one. You see, Christianity doesn't even have a definition of what the gospel is. The Bible tells you it's in Luke chapter one, verse sixty-eight to seventy-nine. That is the gospel, right? Whether you like it, understand it or not, it is to the Israelites. It is for the Israelites, and that is what is going to happen. There's nothing that can change it. Just like, uh, like the Bible says. Whatever the Lord has for you, no one can take for you. All right? you can, and whatever the Lord does to you, no one can protect you from. And this is what is happening. And don't think for a minute. Please do not make the mistake of thinking that because the first three people that were killed in this escalation to World War III were so-called black people, that this nation is going to go over there and bomb for black people. That is not what is happening. I perceive from the scriptures that the death, the first deaths, and that was, was due to the fact that judgment must start at the house of the Most High Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. The judgment has to be upon Israel first. And, you know, these are three people, you know, it's a sad situation. They, were, they died. Their families are mourning because they, they, their family members passed away. It is very sad. However, it is judgment. These three whether they knew about, knew that they were Israelites, probably did not know. Whether they, <laughs> whether they would have stayed in the military had they found out they were Israelites, we don't know. You know, that would have been a tough decision for myself. You're right. But what I do understand is that there's someone here that is going to listen, okay? Someone is going to listen, and we're going to find out, they're going to find out the truth, and they're going to research, because this is what we... What we Israelites suggest you do, do not trust in what we say, even though we're saying, thus said the Lord, we want you to read the Bible yourself. That's what we want you to do. We want you to get right with your power, your God. You see, the world says that the one they call God is their God, right? But they aren't doing anything that he says to do in the Bible. They are doing one thing that it says to do. In fact, they support for the most part, all of these wicked laws in the United Snakes of America. Okay? They support it. And all the other countries around the world where they have laws that are against the word of the Lord. Now, if you are against the word of the Lord, I mean, in, in, in that you support wicked laws, then you're going to die with, when the judgment comes. Because the Lord needs you to speak up and be against injustice and wrong. That's what he needs you to do. And not many people have the intestinal fortitude to do that. Not many people have that. But the Lord, when the, but when the Lord places his spirit on his people, <laughs> oh yeah, oh Lord, yes. When his spirit is upon our people, we get out here, we tell you the truth, and we don't care whether you listen or not. We don't care if you get mad or not, because it says there in Isaiah and, and, uh, and in Ezekiel that this was going to be the case, that, that our people are a stiff-necked and rebellious people. They, they won't listen to you because they won't listen to the Lord. That's what it says. The Lord knows that. Zechariah chapter 13 verses 8 and 9 says that two out of three Israelites will be cut off and die. That's what it says. Okay? Will be cut off and die. So what do you think is going to happen? It seems like the majority of people are going to die. 
perceive it how you will. What I do know is that the remnant is also considered an innumerable multitude. The repentant Israelites are considered a innumerable multitude. So we're going to get this, get through this, okay? So again, the doomsday clock signifies the end of Gentile rule on the earth. That's what it's for. And it is 90 seconds to midnight. So we're going to get into this. Now, one of the signs you're going to see, we talked about this last week, but one of the signs we're going to reiterate it in a different way is uproars of the people are a sign of the end times. Now, what do you see? You see, like I pointed out just a few minutes ago, the majority of the people on the planet are against the state of Israel destroying the Palestinians. But they're going to keep doing it. They're going to keep murdering the Palestinians because they are in position of power. If the Palestinians were in a position of power, they would not be getting destroyed. Do you understand that? Okay? But they are not in a position of, of, of power. Just like the blacks, Latinos, and Spanish Native Americans in this country are not in a position of power. But what we're doing is relying on the Lord. And until the Lord Im imbues us with spiritual power, because the Bible does say, in that day thy people will be willing. How, why are we going to be willing? Because he's going to give us the power of the sword. He's going to make us incorruptible. He's going to give us new bodies. He's going to put his laws in our inward parts. You see? He's going to give us eternal life. And then we will be willing to do every single thing he says because we won't be worried about these Gentiles anymore. Right? And many of us are not afraid of what the Gentiles will do anyway. All right? Right now. But we know that the bulk of our people are. This is the reason why you won't speak up. You won't get, you won't say, uh, you won't oppose all of this wickedness in uh, society. This is the reason, especially the reason why your Christian pastor won't do it. Your Christian pastor will not address these issues the way the Israelites do. They dance around the issue, okay? They try to sugarcoat their, some of their responses. They try to intellectualize the response. The answer is no to many, I'm sorry, to all of these wicked laws and wicked things that support immorality around the world. The answer is just no. The answer is not to sugarcoat and explain it for five minutes. It took me what? A tenth of a second to say the word no. Don't do it. Okay, that's maybe a second. Don't do it. Read Romans chapter 1. They tell you the, the law against homosexuality is not in the New Testament. It's right there in Romans chapter 1. It's in doggone um, Revelation, uh, not doggone, but it, it's in also in Revelation chapter 22. Okay, so you've been told a lie because these pastors benefit from telling you lies. They benefit from singing and dancing with you every time you go to that church or the meeting place. Now, let's get into this. Uproars of the people are signs of the end times. Uproars of the people are signs of the end times. Again, this is Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 to 8. And Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed, and shall deceive many. Now let's break that down. Okay? Let's break that down. The, now I'm going to tell you, point blank, the Israelites are not many people. Not right yet, not right now. So that is not talking about the Israelites telling you the truth of this Bible. But it is talking about over 2.1 billion Christians. That's many, all right? You better understand this. This is very, very, this is very simple. This is very easy once, you, once the Lord has given you spiritual eyes and ears. If you do not have spiritual eyes and ears, you will not understand this truth. You won't understand it. You will continue to go down that, that rabbit hole of delusion believing in everything that you're going to learn in Christian church tomorrow, the Catholic church, or the, or the mosque, okay? So it goes on to say, verse 6, and ye shall, let's read that again, verse 5, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed, and shall deceive many. Okay? Verse 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You see that? So, we see that there's conflict around the world. We see America is bombing. Different uh, countries are Iran and Syria. Not Iran. They won't go into Iran. They're bombing Iraq. Excuse me, Iraq and Syria. Okay? By extension, they're saying that there's Muslims that support anti-American interests in those two countries. But they will not go into Iran like that. Okay? Now, what I will give you a hint as a military man. 
if the Europeans get any inkling that they have an edge and if they can use it, they're going to use it. I will tell you that. And that's what they're trying to figure out. They're trying to wait for that, 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 that opportunity, okay? That's what they're doing. And any wise strategist would do the same. Okay, now, we're going to go on. It says, For a nation shall rise against nation. That means race shall rise against race. Do you ever, you got to be wondering, why is there always a so-called black and white issue in the United States of America? You got to ask that question. Because even during my whole time in the military, I asked, this, I asked that question. Why is it, why does the problems seem to be black and white? Why is it always white folks against black folks? Why is that? Because you're the people of the Lord. Some of you, not all of you, some of you, not all of you. Some of you look like the white man, but you're, you're a Negro. Some of you look like Asian, but you're Negro. Some of you look like Arabs, but you're Negro. Some of you look like Africans, but you're a Negro. The reason why we look like all of the other nations is because we mingled with those nations. That's why, just like you're doing today. Today they call it swirling, right? They got their new names for it, but it's the same old thing, all right? When you have sex <laughs> with another nation and you have children, that's how you put your seed in, the, in that particular nation of people, okay? That's what happens, and that's what happened, and it continues to happen. So it says, for nation shall rise against nation, or race against race, and kingdom against kingdom, that means realm or countries against country, or territories against territories. And we see the perfect example that we, now we have two more examples. I mean, one more example. We have Russia going into Ukraine, and now we have the United States of America going and bombing Iraq and Syria. Now there's two examples of territories going into other territories, or kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. You see that? All of these are just the beginning. And that's the point I made with the deaths of those three so-called black soldiers. Is this the beginning of sorrows? Because judgment starts at the house of Yahweh, the house of God, as they say in the Bible. Okay, so now, we're going to go on. We're going to take a read of... Oh, also, one other point about this kingdom against kingdom. There is a consolidation of Europeans around the world, okay? They have the United Nations. They have NATO. They have multiple different organizations. It's, it's a slew of them. You, can, you, you will spend years trying to, trying to um, report on all the various organizations that Europeans have in order to consolidate their power, okay? And one of them, one of the terms they use is the West. When you hear the West... But then now, frequently they try to associate it with Europe. But the West means Europeans. That's what it means, the West. It means all of the, the whole 12 tribes of Esau, okay? Esau, Edom. That's what it is, just so you can understand. So this is Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Because people think that things will happen for, um, for no reason, but guess what? They do. Proverbs 20, 24. Man's goings are of the Lord Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. How can a man then understand his own way? You see? You see, things happen because the Lord allows them to happen. I got to do a lesson about this. Uh, I read upon this video where this, these two Europeans are talking, and they're asking, why does, the, why does God allow evil in the world? And the, uh, the, the uh, European pastor's answer is bogus. <laughs> it is nonsensical. It makes no sense. Okay? But I, it's going to be explained succinctly and accurately by the word of the Lord. We're going to explain that. So, a man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man understand his own way? How can he understand his own way? He can't. You see, sometimes you do things, you wonder, why did you do it? That's because the Lord has put something in you. He manifested something to, he, manifest, he did some sort of something to manifest in you. You see, we have lives to live out. And when we live out those lives, we live them, whether they be wicked or not, 
Whether we get punished or not, we have good times or not, all of those things are of the Lord. Whether you get rich or made poor is of the Lord. Whether you live or die is of the Lord. Whether you get sick or be healed is of the Lord. You may go to the doctor, but understand this, it is the Lord that heals you. The doctor does, does some necessary things to help that process along, but ultimately it is the Lord that mends you and heals you. Okay? Do not... So bro brother, brother spouted out a multitude of mixed of scriptures, but you know what? We got to understand what we're saying, okay? We got to be very, very, very cautious about what we're saying. Because that weapon formed against us shall not prosper. Guess what? There's a, there's a ton of weapons formed that are formed against us that are prospering against our people. One of them is social media. Social media, and you know what? The Jewish man said he gave you your actors and actresses and your celebrities for gods. And guess what? You do worship them as gods. You know all kinds of facts and figures about them, but you don't know not one scripture in this Bible. How is that possible? How is that possible? You know everything about a celebrity, all their kids, their birth dates, all their so-called accomplishments, the films they made, but you can't remember one scripture in this Bible. They're your gods. It's very simple. They are your gods. And they are your false gods too, okay? So now, we're going to go on, because <laughs> this is described in the Bible, signs of the end time. This is Second Ezra chapter 9, verses 1 to 3. And now this is the angel of the Lord talking to Ezra. Ezra is called Esdras in the Apocrypha. It's just an English a translation of the Greek from the English Ezra. Okay, here it is. It says, verse 1, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest, meaning the most high, will begin to visit the world which he made. You see, the Lord went away to his place. As it says in the word, he's going to turn his face from the Israelites. And he went to his place. And he said that in our affliction, we shall seek the Lord early. You better seek him early, like right now. We're out here telling you the truth, and you better get it, because if you don't get it, you're going to die. Okay? That's what's going to happen. You're going to go through a lot of suffering. You could go through a lot of suffering even before then. You got to get this thing right. Okay? So it goes on to say, verse 3, Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, you see that? That is the, one of the signs of the end. And like I just pointed out, I'm going to say it again. The majority of the people on the planet do not agree with the state of the fake Jews in Israel destroying the Palestinians. But the, but the state, the fake Jews in Israel are going to continue to do it because they're in the position of power to do it. If the Palestinians had the power, they wouldn't be getting destroyed. Just like the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Spanish, Native Americans in this country. If you had the power, you wouldn't be under subjection of the Europeans. But you don't have the power. I don't have the power. So we're subject to the authority of the Europeans. We can't force them to change their laws. Okay? Did you know that recently there was a black woman? There's a black woman that found that she she got a, she's a mathematician of, of of sorts. All right, she got a degree in whatever is required to uh, work with tax law. So something in mathematics, and she found out that within the tax code of the United States of America, there are ways to destroy black people economically, okay? That racism is actually written into the tax law. And you know, then they made her head of an organization of oversight over some things within the IRS. And she, she uh, gave the proposal to things that would, would rectify the situation. And they have not rectified and they're not going to rectify it. They're not going to, it's not gonna happen. Shemashiach asked his disciples, he said, of whom does Rome collect tribute? From their people or another people? All praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, And Yahweh, and then uh, Peter said that Rome collects from our people. Yahweh said, well, then are the people free. What he was saying was, when Israel starts collecting taxes from the Gentiles, then we're free. 
As long as we're paying taxes and tribute to the Romans, we're not free. That's the reason why we say you're not free in, a, in the United States of America. Because until you're exacting taxes from the Europeans, the Asians and Arabs, you're not free. You're not free. Here's what's actually happening. When they have freedom, you have freed Edom. Edom is the white man. You see that? Freedom, they're free. They're, they have their freedom on the camera. They have freedom, but this is who is actually free. Edom is free. You see that? The so-called white man is free to rule and pillage the earth. That's what is happening, okay? That's what's going on. But like, hey, the subject of this conversation today, that the doomsday clock marks the end of the Gentiles' control and rule on the earth. That's what this thing is about. That's what this lesson is about, okay? So it goes on to read in verse 17 of 2nd Ezra chapter 9, <clears throat> because as we move towards the end, there's going to be the Holy Spirit placed upon the Israelites, and they're going to repent and return to follow the laws, statutes, and commandments of this Bible in the faith of Meshach Yahushai. We're going to do that because it's prophesied that the Lord was going to, in modern terms, wake us up. Okay, but it's more than just waking you up. Because a lot of you are woke, but you're not spiritually awakened. A lot of you so-called are woke. You know all of the evil in society. You love watching the videos about all the evil things against the black people. You love watching all the evil against the, the um, Hispanics. You love watching all the evil against the Native Americans. But you will not change your own life. Verse 17, Second Ezra chapter 9. And he answered me saying, Like as the field... So also is the seed, as the flowers be, such are the colors also. Such as the workman is, such also is the work. Who are the workmen? We're talking about these prophets of the Lord that are out here on these highways and byways telling the truth of this Bible. That's who the workmen are. The workmen are not your, is not your Christian pastor who's telling you not, nothing but things that make your ears itch. You know, pay attention to me and tingle your ears. You know, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're here to get you right with the Lord correctly, accurately by the word of the Lord. Your pastor is there to unseat some money out of your pocket. That's what he's there for. We don't, I don't want your money. So it goes on to say, such as are the colors, such as the workman is, such also is the work. And as the husbandman is himself, so is he husbandry also, for it was the time of the world, meaning you're going through life doing whatever you do while you're doing working in life. Husbandry is the raising of crops and animals, okay? So you're going through life doing whatever it is you do in your occupation, your work. Verse 18, and now when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man spake against me. You see? Yeah, because man wasn't created. It wasn't created yet. And then once the, the, the Lord created creation, you had Adam, Adam fell. You had the sons of men fail. And now the sons of men are ruling on the earth against the Israelites. And we're going to see that here in a minute. We're going to see that. They're ruling against, against the, over the Israelites. They were not called. They claim to be called. They claim to have a group of people in our land. It's all a lie. Revelation 2.9, Revelation 3.9. Okay, so it goes on to say, verse 19, For then everyone obeyed, but now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted by a perpetual seed, perpetual descendants, and by a law which is unsearchable, rid themselves. You see? Because you won't search the laws of this Bible, the laws of the Lord. You know, and they try to discount it by saying the law of Moses. The, it's the Lord that gave Moses the law. Okay? Verse 20. So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it. A lot of perils, a lot of evil, a lot of destruction. Just like it's been done right now today. It's being done right before our eyes. And what is going to happen in judgment for all of this activity, all of this evil in the world? What's going to happen is the judgment of the Lord is going to happen. And the Lord is going to do whatever he decides to do. 
And when he does it, there'll be no one that can stop him. Just like there's no one that can stop him from doing anything to anyone you love. That's the issue. You see, you think it's the devil that's, that's taking people out there that's not. It's the Lord God that sanctions every single death. The Bible says that to the Lord Yahweh belong the issues of death. He decides who dies, how they die, and when they die. <coughs> and nothing can take that judgment out of his hand. Nothing. The Lord has perfect, complete timing. He can make multiple events happen in one particular incident. In one incident. He can bring a multitude of things together. All right? So it goes on to read in verse 21. And I saw and spared it greatly, and have kept me a grape for the cluster, and a plant of a great people. Now, what is that talking about? That is a parable, and that parable means that he is going to have a remnant. He is going to have a remnant. One of the remnant, one of the remnant is speaking to you right now, praying and hoping to be one of the hopeful elect. One of the ones that is going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is not going to be in the sky. We're not going up there. The Lord is coming down here. Matthew chapter 6 tells you that. In what they call the Lord's Prayer. All right? It says, on earth, we're not going up there. The Lord doesn't, look, we're too, we're too doggone wicked <laughs> to go up where the Lord is. The Lord cannot look on this evil and sin. That's why he sent his son. And in Christianity, you actually think it's actually the father. He keeps saying, my father, our father. But you, say, you think it's the same person. See, you're making a mistake. It's because the Gentiles have gotten hold of the Hebrew scriptures, and they are telling their doctrine. And now it's all twisted and confused. But now the Lord has set forth his prophets to tell you the truth. All right, this is going to be verse 22 of 2nd Ezra chapter 9. Let the multitude perish then. You hear that? Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain, meaning born in meaningless, meaninglessness. And let my grape be kept and my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. Perfect just means complete. Perfect does not mean what you think it means. It means complete. Now, let's read that again. Let's read that again. This is what the Lord God says, whether you like it, understand it or not. Let the multitude perish then, which are born in vain, and let my grape be kept and my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect or complete. You see that? Now, we're going to go to 2nd Ezra chapter 15. We're going to read verses 1 to 10. This is the, prop that the, the fact that the prophecy is certain. The prophecy is going to happen. Why? The Lord says that his word will not return void. You see that? His word will not return void. So it reads, verse 1, 2 Ezra 15, verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper. We're reading it from paper now. For they are faithful and true. This prophecy, the writings on paper are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Now, imaginations can mean the ideas against you from these Gentiles. It also can mean the rebellion, okay? Because it talks about the imaginations of your own heart. So it's the rebellions of your own heart, which is an idea that comes out of your mind. Same thing, all right? Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. What is incredulity? Unbelief. Unbelief. So do not let the unbelief of them trouble thee. Because many of our people are not going to believe the truth. Zechariah 13, 8, 9. We said, said it earlier. Two-thirds of Israel is going to be cut off and die. That's how you know everybody can't make it in the kingdom of heaven. Because the Lord said two out of three of his people are going to die. They're not going to repent. They have to die. Okay. So do not fear the incredulity or un un unbelief of them that trouble thee, that speak against thee. Now, there is a media blackout against the Israelites. You will not see today what you're hearing today recorded and broadcasted on the news. It will not be on, on TBN. It will not be on CBN or any other Christian station because they don't want the truth. 
they want to perpetuate their rule on the earth. And we're talking about the end of Gentile rule today in this lesson. Okay, so it goes on to read, verse 4, For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. You see that? Because you don't believe you're going to die. I said it plainly. Okay? Verse 5, Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. All right? These, as a matter of fact, are the things the Lord uses for judgment. Okay? For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. I mean, they get to accomplish all the evil that they want to do. Pass all the wicked laws, do all the wicked behavior, conquer and colonize all over the earth, snatch up all the natural resources, and make the people that work in the land do all the digging for the resources. Figure that out. Verse 7. Therefore saith the Lord, listen, listen very closely, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. You see, because we are the strange fruit. We are the people who are hung on those trees in the strange fruit. We are the people who are put in uh, the devil's punch bowl. We are the people still hung in this country in some of the, 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 uh, the state capitals, no less. Okay? It's us. Why is it us? Because you are the chosen people of the Lord. And it was judgment that that happened or would not have happened. There's, some, there's a reason why it happened. But the Lord, these are all signs, signs, signs of the end of Gentile rule and control on the earth. And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them, those that were destroyed by these Gentiles, and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Verse 10, behold, this is how you know, it's not everybody, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. America is spiritual Egypt and Sodom. America is spiritual Egypt and Sodom. America is spiritual Egypt and Sodom, thus saith the Lord. All right? So there's a judgment that has to happen unto this spiritual Egypt and Sodom as well. More signs, we're going to skip down to verse 14 to 27. 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 14, it says, Woe, woe means destruction to the world and them that dwell therein. What's it talking about? It's talking about all the people that are doing the wickedness, that ascribe to the wickedness, they won't speak against the wickedness. See, you're on one side or the other. You can't be silent. Silence is consent. Do you understand that? And that's, that's a quote from a European man, by the way. Silence is consent. When you don't speak against evil and wrongdoing, then you are part of the evil and wrongdoing. That's how the Lord knows. The Lord says, go through the land and put a seal on the ones that sigh and cry. If you're silent, you're not sighing and crying. You understand that? If you're not sighing and crying, meaning speaking against evil, then you are co-signing the wickedness and you're going to die with those that are wicked. That's what's going to happen. All right? It's just that simple. Woe to the world or destruction to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. It's going to come nigh. The Lord is going to lower that sword unto these Gentiles and the wicked of his people. And one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands or weapons in their hand. What do they have today? You know what they got today. They got that doggone gun. All right, verse 16. For there shall be sedition among men a rebellion among men and invading one another. And this is why you see what's happening at the southern border and all of the borders of all of the European countries where other nations like Africans are trying to get into those nations. Now, why shouldn't they be allowed into those nations? <coughs> when they were colonizing all over Africa, they were able to go all through Africa. Matter of fact, there's a million and a half Europeans of, of multiple tribes down in South Africa. Now you got some Africans who want to go into European countries and they won't let them in. What sense does that make? It doesn't make any sense. Okay? 
So, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings or princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. You see, what's going to happen is people are not going to listen to their political leaders. They're not going to listen to their religious leaders. They might not even listen to the, the leaders in their own families because they want to go out here and do what they want to do. They want to go out here and protest. They want to be part of the movement and all this other crazy stuff. Verse 17. But this is what the Lord says. A man shall desire to go in a city and shall not be able. What is that talking about? It's talking about when they're going to do martial law. They're going to shut off everything. That's the reason why you have all these cameras in Reno Valley. They just told you recently that they, they installed these cameras for your safety. They're going to turn them on and they're going to watch for people who are going, uh, I think it's 10 miles over the speed limit. No, that's not what they're watching for. What they're watching for is to see how well their technology works. Their little algorithm where it's able to track you from one, one place to another. That's what they're really trying to do. Okay, so y'all do not understand what's going on. Okay. All of these, these um, technology for convenience is not convenient. Let's give you another one. You have an autistic man by the name of Elon Musk. He is autistic. Asperger's no longer exists. Asperger's has always been a form of autism. Elon Musk has autism. And I believe that is the one uh, weakness that he has because I believe he's being used by people more powerful than him who you might call the elites. And what I perceive is actually happening is, you look at his neural link, his neural link. Now he says some things that are against um, world domination, but then he supports neural link. He wants to change human beings into robots. All right, he wants to link your brain to the internet. Your brain does not need to be linked to the internet. Okay, Neuralink is nothing more than another evil tool of the devil. Okay, so that you can understand. And it really isn't funny. It's, it's funny that, to me that you guys don't understand the truth. That's what's really funny. But we're here to give it to you. All right, we're here to give it to you. Verse 18. For because of their pride of these Gentiles, the cities shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Now, when you find men afraid, you got a problem. Because as manly as some of these women want to act, they're not going to get out here and fight like a man would. But it says here, and men shall be afraid. So that means a lot of men are going to lose that, that, that manly character. All right? You don't want to, be, you don't want to uh, call to your husband for help and he not help. You don't want that. You want the help, right? So, but this says some of these men are going to fall afraid and weak. Verse 19. Listen to this. But then it's going to be the other type of man too, right? And these are some evil men right here. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. You see that? So some, there's going to be some wicked men out here too. You got some men that are afraid to take action to defend themselves and their families, and you got some out here robbing other people. Verse 20, Behold, saith the Most High, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. He's talking about these Gentiles, all the leaders of the Gentile kingdoms which are from the rising of the sun, that means from the east, from the south, from the east, and from thy banus, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. Who is the them? To the Israelites. To repay the things that have been done to the Israelites. Like I said earlier, World War I was fought by the Europeans. World War II was fought by the Europeans. World War III is going to be fought by the Europeans. As much as they don't want to do it, they're going to do it. Verse 21. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen in 2023, 2024, I'm sorry. Wow. As they do in 2024, so will I do also and recompense or repay in their bosom. Thus saith the Lord power. You see that? He's going to repay for everything that they have done. And guess what? You can pray for the president. You can pray for your uh, political leaders. But... The hand, when the Lord's judgment comes, your prayers did not change the judgment of the Lord. Understand that. You see, even your people in politics have to be judged because they're co-signing the evil in the support of these wicked laws. And I don't care if they're man or woman, young or old. 
your, your political leaders are part of the problem because they are not speaking up. They're not crying out against the evil. They're, they might pitch, hey, let's change this, change that, but they can't change it, right? So therefore, and then they stay in the position. They stay in the job. It seems like the only way out is for them to be destroyed. Okay, verse 22. My right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. So you have to ask yourself, who is shedding innocent blood upon the earth? Is this what is being done right now in Syria and Iraq? Is, we, is this what has been done all around the earth by the colonizers of the Europeans, wherever they may be, including those that came over here to this country? Is it them? Yes, it's them. I'll tell you. It's them. Verse 23. The fire is gone forth from his wrath, from the Lord's wrath, and hath consumed the foundations of the earth. We have yet to see this, and it's going to happen. And the sinners, like the straw that is kindled, like the sinners, I'm sorry, and the sinners, like the straw that is kindled, the sinners are going to burn. So what happened to this love the sinner, hate the sin thing in Christianity? It's a lie. It's a lie. The Lord says that, that he hears not the prayers of sinners. That's what the Lord says. If you're engaged in sin, that's what sinner means. It means you're actively engaged in sin. All right? That's the proper understanding of it. And since every so-called Christian says, I'm a sinner, hey, thou sayest, and thou sayest, this is what's going to happen. And the sinners, like the straw that is kindled, are going to be destroyed. Woe, verse 24, woe or destruction to them that sin and keep not my commandments. And that's what an exclamation point in the scripture. Woe or destruction to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. Verse 25. I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the power, from your God. Defile not my sanctuary. You see, and the Lord had to destroy the sanctuary. He had allowed the, the, the uh, Gentiles to destroy the sanctuary because we were so wicked. Verse 26. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him. You can't hide it. You're in your secret closet. You're in the dark. You might go 100 miles away. It doesn't matter. The Lord knows everything. The angels are recording everything you say, everything you do, and everything you think. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him, and therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction. Did he say they were going to be saved and go into the kingdom of heaven? Just because you know that there's a God, do you know that there's a Savior? No, it does not. It doesn't say that. Let's read it again. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him, and therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction. Verse 27. For now are the plagues come upon the whole world, and ye shall remain in them. For the Most High shall not deliver you, because ye have sinned against him. This is the truth of this Holy Bible. This is from the 1611 King James Version Bible. The first of the King James versions to ever be printed. Now today you have these that are printed and it's missing 14 books. Second Ezra chapter 16 verses 1 to 5 and then verse 9 to 15. This concerns Babylon and other places are threatened with plagues that cannot be avoided. Verse 1, woe unto thee Babylon. And Babylon is a worldwide system of the Europeans, by the way. It says, Woe or destruction be unto thee, Babylon, and Asia, and Asia. Woe or destruction be unto thee, Egypt, and Syria. Now, who does the Lord use to cause this judgment? He uses people. What, didn't we just see the um, United States of America bomb Syria? What does it say? Woe or destruction be unto thee, Egypt, and Syria. You see that? This is how the Lord accomplishes his judgment through people, through spiritual means as well, through sickness and disease. We read it. Famine. All right? Famine, the sword, pestilence. All right? This is how he does it. Verse 2. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair. Bewail your children. You're going to cry about your children because guess what he's going to do? He's going to kill your children. And be sorry for, our for your destruction is at hand. For your destruction is at hand. It's coming. It is coming. 
<clears throat> Verse 3, a sword, here we go, <laughs> a sword is set upon you, and who may turn it back? A weapon is sent upon you, who may turn it back? Who is able to turn back the bombs on Syria? Who is able to turn back the bombs on Iraq? Who is able to turn back the bombs on the Palestinians? Nobody. No one. Verse 4. A fire is sent among you, and who shall quench it? That's why you have fires all around the world. They call them wildfires. That's why you have them. The Lord sends them for judgment. Whether a person starts the fire is not the point. The point is how the fire... How, how the fire spreads, how fast the fire spreads, and the fact that they cannot put out the fire. That is it. Okay? That's what you got to understand. Verse 5. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? No one can drive them away. No one can drive away the coronavirus. No one can drive away uh, RSV, the flu, COVID. Nobody can, nobody can drive it away. Verse 9, if I shall go forth from his wrath, and who is it? Who is he that may quench it? No one. 10, he, he shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? And you haven't heard, there's four thunders in the book of Revelation. And it doesn't tell you what happens after each one of those thunderings. So guess what? We have much more to experience. Much more to experience. Verse 11. The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? You see, when the Lord's judgment comes, when it says there are going to be two grinding at the mill, one be left, one taken, you're out in the field, one, one left, one taken, you're not going to be able to do anything to save the other person. You're not going to be able to do anything. Verse 12. The earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. The sea arises up with the waves of the deep. We see all those tsunamis around the world, do we not? And the waves of it are troubled. And the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. You see that? It's the Lord doing all of these things. Verse 13. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Do you see that? Because what it's talking about is judgment upon these Gentiles that are now resident all around the world. You see, they're enjoying the fatness of the earth. They can go into any land they want and have a great time living. Verse 14. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. He's reiterating that over and over again. Verse 15. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out. We just talked about that. Till it consumed the foundation of the earth. This is going to be even greater. Because the Lord says that the first judgment was by water. The second judgment by fire. Now, an academic word for that is conflagration. Conflagration. Okay? Plagues are sent unto you. And what is he that may drive them away? The Lord's going to send sickness and disease, and there'll be nothing, absolutely nothing that can be done. There'll be, there'll be no vaccine for what the Lord is going to do. All right? It's not going to, it's not going to be any medication, no technology, no neural link is going to get you out of these plagues. All right, now, the Gentile sins are worse than the Israelites. This is what is identified in this next chapter we're going to read. Okay, this is Second Andrews chapter three, verses twenty-eight to thirty-six. Because our people had a question: we were in captivity in Babylon. How is it, Lord, that we go through Babylon? We see all of this evil, and you haven't judged them, but you judge your people to be under these people. This is what is said right here, Second Andrews chapter three, verse twenty-eight to thirty-six. The subject of which is Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon, Mystery Babylon today. Their wickedness is the same as the former Babylon. Okay, this is verse twenty-eight. Are their deeds then any better that inhabit Babylon, that they should therefore have dominion over Zion? Zion is another word for the Israelites. Verse 29. For when I came thither and had seen impieties or wickedness without number, then my soul saw many evildoers 
in this 13th year. This is the 13th year of the captivity in Babylon. So that my heart, my mind failed me. Verse 30. For I have seen how thou suffered them sinning and has spared wicked doers and has destroyed thy people and preserved thine enemies and has not signified it. You see, he's allowing the Gentiles to build up that tab of sin. That's what he's doing. Verse 31. I do not remember how this day may be left. Are they then of Babylon better than they of Zion? Are they better than the Israelites? That's the question he proposed. This is Ezra. Verse 32. Or is there any other people who knoweth thee beside Israel? No, it's not. Or what generation has so believed thy covenants as Jacob? Those are two questions. And yet their reward of the Israelites appeareth not, and their labor hath no fruit. For I have gone here and there throughout the heathen, throughout the Gentiles, and I see that they flow in wealth, that they flow in wealth, and think not upon thy commandments. You see that? And all of Christianity says the laws are done away with. They think not upon thy commandments. You see that? This Bible is a true book. Let's read that again. Because this is what I see and every Israelite sees. Every repentant Israelite sees. And yet, the reward upon the heathen appeareth not, and their labor hath no fruit. For I have gone here and there through the heathen, through the Gentiles, and I see that they flow in wealth and think not upon thy commandments. Verse 34, listen to this. This is what we ask the Lord to do today. The Israelites ask this every day. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance and theirs also that dwell in the world and so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Yisrael within the Israelites. Verse 35. Or oh, when was it that they which dwell upon the earth, the Gentiles, have not sinned in thy sight. When have they not sinned in the sight of the Lord? Or what people have so kept thy commandments? None of the Gentiles are keeping the commandments. None of them. Verse 36, here it is. Thou shalt find that Yisrael by name have kept thy precepts, but not the heathen, but not the Gentiles, okay? Now, we're going to look at some warnings. We're going to close this out. We have a warning in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9. And it reads, Rejoice, um, rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart, let your mind cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Because you're not concerned about these things that are going to happen as, as, when you find out you're going to have to endure as an adult. As a child, you don't have any clue what's about to happen. And walk in the ways of thine heart. When you walk in the ways of your mind and in the sight of thine eyes, but know thou that for all these things the Most High will bring thee into judgment. You see, I faced the judgment for all the things I did in my youth when I didn't have any idea about the law, such commandments of the Most High. And everyone on, that is an Israelite is going to face the judgment up to seven times more for your sins. You wonder why you get charged more? Because the Lord says, because of our forefathers sin and you are your forefathers, that you're going to be punished up to six times more for your sin. That's what he says. And that's why you get hammered worst. Proverbs 16.32. We must maintain self-control. This is the subject. We must contain self-control. It reads, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit, all right, his, mind, his own body, that than he that taketh a city. Let's read that again. And he that ruleth his spirit, than he that taketh a city. You see? Second Corinthians chapter 5 and 10. Now, this is about the appearance before the anointed for judgment. Okay? This is about the appearance before the anointed for judgment. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of the anointed, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. So you need to watch about what you do. You better watch what you do. According to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. You see that? We're going to get a reward for good, and we're going to get a reward for bad. Now, reward for bad would be punishment. Proverbs chapter 15, verses 31 to 33. 
This is talking about reproof. Reproof means correction, okay? And what is correction? The instruction and fear of the Lord. This is Proverbs 15, 31, 33. The ear that heareth the reproof or correction of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof or correction getteth understanding. This is what we're doing today, trying to get you right with the Lord. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, Native Americans. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Before you get honored, you have to be humble. How you doing?